Hi, I'm Dr. Pao Vang, an original and throat surgeon with the Mayo Clinic Health System, and I'm here to address questions on meringotomy, or perhaps more commonly known as ear tubes. So meringotomy is the process of putting ear tube into the ear, and that process requires making a low incision on the eardrum and putting a tube that has a hole in that tube. We put it right on the eardrum, and that hole allows air to go in and out between the ears. It is very common, it is the most common procedure that we do in kids. It's because kids have a lot of runny nose and they get a lot of ear infections. The eustachian tube, which is the tube that drains the ear, is not well developed, so kids have a lot of ear infections. So it is the most common procedure that we do in kids. In kids, it's usually when we look in there, kids who have ear infections are usually very fussy. They don't sleep well, and mom and dad usually catches on pretty quickly. We will look in there, you can actually see the eardrum bulging with fluid. Sometimes it's red when it's actively infected. And in those cases, we talk to them about putting tubes in so that at least it'll, it'll provide some relief, it'll relieve the pain. Kids will act a lot better and they won't be so clean and they also sleep better too. So how we determine if a patient needs a uh, ear uh, tube is in an adult, the, they will usually complain of muffled hearing, ear pressures. It will also give them a sense of imbalance, almost like a dizziness, because you have fluid in one ear and not the other. And that difference in pressure will give them a sense of imbalance. It's almost like in a, that they're on a boat, they're sort of rocking back and forth. And we look in there, you can actually see fluid. And in that case, then we always say, you know, it's probably better to put a tube in there so at least you can regain your balance and you don't have to worry about pressure and ear pain uh, and that will usually take care of it. The anesthesia required for an ear tube for adults, it's pretty simple, it's topical. We do it straight in the clinic. We just put a little topical medication right on the eardrum and that numbs up the eardrum. And then we just make an incision and put the tube in. For little kids, they don't sit still. So we take them to the operating room, we give them a little gas, they fall asleep, and then we do the tube. And the, the, the whole procedure takes less than a minute. I always joke with parents that putting the patient, putting the kid to sleep actually takes longer than for me to do the ear tube because it's so quick. Recovery, usually for adults, uh, they can go back to work the same day. There is hardly any pain at all. For kids, what I tell parents is keep them at home uh, for the, uh, the day of surgery. Tomorrow, they can go back to daycare or go back to school. If you notice, relief is almost immediate. In adults, once we remove the fluid, they immediately feel better. The pressure goes away, they hear better. Um, the dizziness also improves almost right away. In kids, it's almost immediate as well because the fluid is gone, they're feeling better, and they tend to do the, the they, they tend to be back to normal pretty quickly as well. The tube usually stays in there for about a year. In kids, what I tell parents is they will stay in there usually for in, a year. In adults, about six months. We tend to, you know, get rid of those tubes a lot faster than kids. So for kids, it'll be about a year. For adults, usually about six months. Uh, you don't, you don't remove tubes. The tubes are, are made so that they'll fall out. The ear will heal and they'll just kick out the ear, that the tube right into the ear canal and the, and the tube just comes out with the ear wax. So we actually don't remove them. The body removes it. If the tube falls out, if they start having ear, kids start having ear infection again, then we may have to go back and put another tube in. If we have to go back a second time to put ear tubes in, then what we generally recommend is to take out the adenoids as well. The adenoids are fat pad that sits behind the nose and the eustachian tube opens to the right to the side. And sometimes the adenoids are very big that it blocks the eustachian tube so the ear doesn't drain very well. The other thing is that the adenoids harbors bacteria and those bacteria tends to track up and infect the fluid in the ear. So if we have to go back and put tubes in, particularly little kids, we always say, let's remove the adenoids. To learn more, please click on one of the links on the screen or the description below.